Hi there, welcome back to my channel, Scrap and Coffee. We are going to start with making this new project that uh, the best name that I could come up with was a box full of goodies, so that's what I'm going to call it. And this is the first construction video for it, and um, we are going to make the box. Because I felt that was easy to start with the box, then we can, everything that we make after this, we can put in the box and keep it all together. Um, for constructing the box, I'm going to use tape. Uh, the first time that I did this uh, was when I made the memory uh, box from Paul Ford. He's the one that introduced me to working with tape. Um, but he's in the UK, right? And he has some sort of construction tape that he's using. That works really great, but it's not so easy to find here in North America. So um, at that time I found uh, book binding tape in one inch wide and that's what I've used and that worked really well. But I find it really hard to find book binding tape that is one inch wide and I don't want to be buying a wider roll and having to cut that in half that's just too much fuss for me then I would rather work with the cardstock so I've been on the search for for tapes uh, ever since and what I've been using the last couple of months is this tape this is a um, masking tape or masking tape I'm not sure how to pronounce it but um, it, it works well it's uh, you have this in all different kinds of colors so that's a really nice advantage you can use any color that you like it's it's reasonably cheap it's i think i've paid like six or seven dollars for a roll for this i'm not sure anymore but uh, that's what i think at least less than 10 canadian dollars for a roll and um, it's quite thin and the downfall is that the inside is white so sometimes you have to ink some edges to to um, to hide that a little bit uh, and it tears rather easy so as you can see here I can I can just tear this so uh, I've used it on several projects and I didn't have any issues with it as of yet so I've used it on the uh, Lady Vagabond trunk and uh, but there I didn't use it on joints or something that all the tape there was just on the edges and that's going to stay where it is it doesn't have to move anymore so I'm not worried about that, but recently I've made a box where I had to place it on the joints, like I did here, I tried the other tape out. Uh, and there I'm not sure how well it's going to stand the test of time. I'm, I'm a little bit worried that over time, by using it, it might tear at some point. So that's why I kept looking for uh, something else, but it's a good, it's a good option. Um, so what I found recently was, is this roll, and this is called Artist Tape. Um, not as cheap. <laughs> I paid, I think I paid uh, a little over 25 Canadian dollars for just this one roll, which made me think for three days before I actually ordered it, because I think that's quite a lot of money for. It's, yeah, I'm not saying that it's not worth it or anything. Uh, just for me as a dutchie i find that quite a lot of money for for one roll of tape so uh, but eventually i did order it and it has a little bit of a rubbery feel so i already know that i'm not able to use my double-sided tape on top of this but we can work around it the inside is black you just see a little bit of color different because there is adhesive on there right but i don't have to hide any white coming through or anything so that's nice i've already like it and also because of this structure of the tape and you get quite a lot i feel that this is quite a lot of tape it will take me a long way i have a little bit more confidence in this tape on the joints so we'll see i'm going to try this tape it's called artist tape i will try to provide links for both these tapes down below in the description box um and we will see i um try to give my honest opinion on that sort of stuff but it's um yeah i, I don't know i i haven't been using it yet and the other one i still have to see how that stands the test of time on that one where i've used it on the joint so i'm not sure yet maybe later in the project i can uh, give you a more of a um uh, of an opinion on that um i'm going to start by making the base of the box and just a little reminder that uh, there is a cutting guide available for this project you can find it in my um, in my etsy shop so again also for that i have a link down below in the description box it's just for a small amount of money you can get a pdf file with all the measurements for the different pieces that makes it easy for you to work along 
and to construct this project and um, with purchasing it you would you really help me and uh, support me and support my channel and just um, make it possible for me to keep bringing you different kind of projects however you don't have to because i will give you measurements in the video uh, i'm not going to put it on screen that's way too much work i don't enjoy doing that so i'm not going to do it uh, but i am telling you the measurements so you can just keep your notebook close by and write them down if that's easy for you that's also a very good um, option and either way you go i'm happy that you're here so um, you are appreciated in if you do or do not buy the cutting guide um, so let's get started i have my chipboard here and i have one piece and i also have i have this large bag full of scrap pieces of chipboard here and uh, i'm going to dig in to use some of those scraps as well i try to use it because i don't think i'm going to bring it along with me when i'm moving so <laughs> let's try to use some of it or at least i'm not going to bring everything maybe i'll i i have always have a hard time throwing stuff away so okay i'm going to do this again because my camera was not focused and i don't know exactly where that happened but um first piece of chipboard let's i have something there to hopefully keep it focused we need a base piece that is six and a quarter by eight and a quarter I'm going to cut the smallest measurement first, six and a quarter. However, before you cut, I am going to cut this not to six and a quarter, but to six and five sixteenth of an inch. So that is one tick mark above the six and a quarter. Make sure that I have an old blade in my paper trimmer here and I'm going to cut that measurement. To try to keep an eye on if the camera stays focused but i like to finish it off with a straight blade you can also do it in your paper trimmer or whatever works for you i'm going to put that side that piece to the side and now i'm going to cut this piece to the eight and a quarter inch measurements so i'm going to line it up with the eight and a quarter so just the measurement that i need eight and a quarter Cut that off and now just i need one extra step i'm going to bring back this piece and cut off that 1 16th of an inch that i've cut it too big so line it up with the six and a quarter and cut off that extra hair and throw that away so now my piece here is to size now this piece because i've cut it that little hair longer is six and five sixteenth of an inch and that's what i need for the length of my side pieces so i can cut off it's only one piece but if i didn't do it i would have nothing on this uh, from this piece so now i can cut this to two inches so two inches by six and five sixteenth of an inch and that is one side panel now this is too small for a second one that's unfortunate but i'm going to put it to the side then our large scrap piece that came off at first, I'm going to cut it to 8 and 5 sixteenth of an inch. Eight and five sixteenth of an inch. <laughs> cut that off. I'm always, when I'm cutting my chipboard, everything is moving from one side to the other side. And then these also need to be two inches so i can cut off my two pieces from this one and another one so i have my two side panels that are two inches by eight and five sixteenth of an inch and now i need one more that is two inches by six and five sixteenth of an inch now unfortunately all of this is too small for that so i'm going to dig in for a scrap piece let's see if this is long enough it is so i'm going to cut it to two inches by six and five sixteen of an inch so just a hair over six and a quarter and 
there we go and I have my five pieces prepared for my base so put that back in close my blade so what am I going to do is we are going to build on the outside against the chipboard and then on one side it's going to line up and then on the other side you're going to stick out that 1 16th of an inch and we can just basically build around oh that's not gonna work of course <laughs> build around our chipboard base so i'm going to use the tape the artist tape but i will not depend on the tape for keeping everything together i'm going to do that with my wet glue i like to use art glitter glue um, but that's what's going to hold everything together and this is what's going to finish it off if you don't have the tape by the way and you want to work with cardstock you can make your cardstock hinges right so you just have a one inch piece of cardstock score it halfway and um, you would apply your tape here on the bumpy side and then make it the length of your side pieces so two that are 8 and 5 16 and two that are 6 and 5 16 and then you would place that uh, right here under the on and use that to construct everything uh, where I use the tape now I hope that makes sense but what I'm going to do here is just place my chipboard base on top of this tape so if you have seen uh, other people use tape I feel that I have a little bit of a different way of working with it uh, but it all works you can do whatever works for you right that's the beauty of crafting you do whatever works for you so I did that along the long side so I'm going to get a long side piece I need to be a little bit careful with my Lately I've been pulling off uh, the little ball that's on top of my fine tip uh, needle here. So on the long piece, along the long side, I am going to apply my glue. Just a thin strip of glue. I try not to be too messy, but that's hard for me with wet glue. <laughs> a thin strip of glue. And I'm going to bump that part up against the edge of my base piece right so i'm going to line up one short side with the edge of the base and then the other side will stick out and i try to make sure that i have nice contact with my base and now i'm going to get a bone folder this one is really easy because it has a little bit of an angle so i can Go let make that go under the tape and then burnish it up against it. So the other tape that I've been working with is really forgiving. So if you have a little bit of a fold in there, you can really burnish that flat. I'm not sure how that's going to be for this one. But there we go. Now the glue of course needs to dry a little bit, but we can continue on the short side now. But it just saves me so much time that I don't have to make all those hinges uh, from the cardstock. So I'm just making my tape. And this is something that happens when I work with the tape this way. The roll is just want to <laughs> close again. So it's sometimes I'm struggling a little bit. But there we go. And I'm just cutting it with my straight blade. I'm just cutting it to size along the edge of the chipboard. Get a short side piece. I'm going to apply my glue. I try to stay in frame along that long side of this piece. And then when I place it up against there, it's also going to go, this edge here is going to go up against the first side piece. So I also going to put some glue right there. So this time I'm going to bump it up against the edge of the chipboard base and also up against the edge of my first side piece. Make sure that everything makes contact. And then again 
I'm going to burnish the tape up against the chipboard edge. So I'm going to work my way around like this. Some tape here on the long side. So try to be gentle when you handle your box because the glue still needs to dry, right? Second long piece, again some glue along that long edge, and then here on the outside edge. So again, especially with these long pieces, try to make sure that you make contact against your base piece. Because sometimes it wants to curve, at least that's happening with my chipboard, so... Try to make good contact here on the, on the end. And you can also go with your bone folder against it before you put up the tape. And now I will bring up the tape, so make sure that I get under there. Okay, last piece, and then we need to do some cleaning up, like finishing it off. But so if I'm a little bit crooked on my tape, you know, that's actually not a big, big problem. I just don't want it to be too bad. Okay, for the last short piece we're going to put some glue right here and then on the outside edge here and also along the short side right there to make contact with the first piece that we've placed Just take your time to make sure that everything is lining up. And then bring the tape up. Okay. So this glue still needs some time to dry, so I don't want to be pushing too hard on it but I still I'm going to clean up the outside edges here so my box is two inches high I'm going to cut pieces that are approximately three inches I'm not like I'm not gonna measure that I'm just going to eyeball it and I'm going to place that on a corner. So again I'm just making sure that I have a, about half of it to fold over. So you have to be a little bit careful because it's still drying. So you can also just put it to the side for a little bit and wait. So we have some overlap on both sides. Then here on the bottom part I'm going to cut a v-shape up to the corner of the box. So from both sides you're gonna cut in. It's really hard to get that uh, to show that. Okay I see that I need to um, change my battery. <laughs> okay so I've got that v-shape here. So what am I going to do now is that middle part, and you can also do it less, but I'm going to do the middle part first. I'm going to 
pull slightly on it, not too hard because you don't want to rip it and stick that down onto the bottom. And then have the other two flaps go over that. I'm trying to show you but it's just really really hard to get that properly uh, in frame. And then you end up with a nice cleaned up corner there. And the tape is um, gives you a lot less bulk on these sort of places than the cardstock does. So that's another advantage of working with the tape. Uh, but again, you can do it with cardstock. So basically I'm going to do the same thing here on top. I'm going to cut with an angle towards the corner, like a V-shape. Don't cut all the way to the corner. You want to keep a little bit of space. So I've made that same cut. And again, I'm going to start with pulling over the middle flap. But you don't want to rip it, so be careful. And then fold over the other two. So I've done two. And then we are going to fold over. It's so hard to get that in. Fold over this one. And then once we have it all, you can burnish it a little bit to make sure that you have good contact, that it's nicely finished off. And I'm going to do this on all four of my corners. So make sure that your piece of tape is long enough to have some overhang on top and bottom. And you also want to have about half of it showing uh, so you can overlap that, fold that over. So if you do it with cardstock, you would cut a piece of cardstock to 3 inches. I'm going to cut with an angle towards the corner here at the bottom. And then I would like to pull the middle one down first and have the other two go over and then i will do the same thing here on top so the first the middle one first and i could even use this bone folder to really push it in that corner but i don't really feel it's necessary for now And I can work my bone folder to really clean off the corner, burnish it a little bit more. We can also do that when they are all four done. So I'm going to do this two more times. So sometimes I feel that my the, the amount of tape that is sticking out is a little bit too long. So I just cut it off. And then make my V-shape cut. Because really you don't need a whole lot more than... Let's say about half an inch of overhang on, on top and bottom. So this is my final one. I'm going to push it in here. And then that is, I have done all my corners. It's already feeling a little bit more sturdy now. Uh, but I'm also going to reinforce the inside. For that, I prefer to use the cardstock. For the simple reason that if I'm going to try to do this with tape, it's not going to work. I'm going to get frustrated. So I have some uh, cardstock hinges uh, semi prepared. I've cut them to one inch and I've made the score line. Um, but I need four of them that are a little under two inches. So I'm going to cut them to one and seven eighths. So I'm going to cut one of my strips that I've just made out of 65 pound weight cardstock. I'm going to cut it to uh, eight inches long. And then it's still a little bit too long, but uh, that's fine. Let me see where I want to have the tape. On the dented side. <laughs> I'm going to place tape on both sides. Okay. Give that a burnish. And now I need to cut four pieces that are one and seven eighths of an inch from this long side. Okay. 
So by doing it this way, it goes a little bit quicker with taping it up and I don't waste a whole lot of my tape by taping up a long piece and then have no use for my scrappies. So here we go. I'm folding towards the bumpy side so my tape is ending up on the outside of, this of these pieces. And what I also like to do is taper it. So from the folded edge, I'm going to put my scissors with an angle and cut. I'm going to do that on both sides for all these pieces. Okay, the box back in. And we are going to place these pieces on the inside corner. So make sure that you put the fold in, the fold really well into your inside corner. And then you are going to stick down both sides. So what I like to do is um, remove one side of the tape, stick it in there. Also make sure that you don't stick out on top. Then I can hold it on the side where my tape backing is still on, push it in the fold and burnish it onto the, on the side. And then I will remove my tape backing of this piece. So I'm just going to repeat that like four times. Now I repeat it three times, right? I do it in a total of four times. Okay, so, and with every step that we take, this gets a little bit more sturdy and finished. So now we're also going to do that on the bottom lines. You see, you can still see some glue there. You can see the uh, connection points. We want to get rid of that as well. So I have four more hinges here that are 11 inches long now, but I'm going to cut them to size. So my base is six and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my pieces a hair under six and a quarter, two of them. And two of them a hair under eight and a quarter. So you could say eight and three sixteenth of an inch or six and three sixteenth of an inch. So two of each and all these pieces I need to tape up on the dented side. So where the score line goes in the cardstock, that's where I'm going to put my tape. And then we fold towards the bump where the score mark comes out of the cardstock. That's what I call the bump. So just like I did for the other hinges. So I am, I am going to edit all of this because otherwise it's going to be a boring long video. Okay, I'm giving that a good burnish and I'm going to do the same thing as I did for my small hinges. I'm folding towards that bumpy side to fold it in half. So the tape is going to end up on the outside. And then I'm also going to cut that angle in there. Do the same thing from the folded edge. I put my scissors and cut with an angle inwards. Just try not to cut into your uh, fold line. So you just go just above the fold line and cut with an angle because if you're going to cut in your fold line, you're going to make your piece shorter. Okay, so it doesn't really matter if you're going to start with a long one or with a short one. Just want to make really sure that you fit in between in the box here. I'm going to remove the tape backing and I'm up one side and that one is going on the bottom and I'm going to really push my fold line. So I'm, I'm, I'm not placing it that straight down where it sticks. I'm angling it slightly so I can really push it in the fold line and then stick that part down. Burnish it and then I remove the tape backing on the other side. So if you're comfortable with removing the tape backing all at once, of course you can do that. Again, I'm really using this bone folder here to put it in that fold in the corner. In the, I don't know how to call it. <laughs> and make sure that everything gets a nice stick. So let's do the other long one. And again, it doesn't really matter the order in what you do this in. You just want to make sure that you did all four sides when you're done. Short ones. So 
the cardstock is going to overlap slightly here. That's fine. Okay, so all of that is nicely cleaned up. Then the last thing that we need to do for now is top edges. So I'm going to do that with the tape again. Um, but just like with everything, if you want to use cardstock, you can do cardstock. So I am just placing the tape. You can also eyeball this um, on top of my piece. And I'm going to try to get it where you can see what I'm doing. But I'm trying to cut it where it's just falling on the inside. Well, I've cut it a little bit short now. It's not the end of the world. I just even out the gap on the sides. Okay. Um, am I going to angle this? Maybe a little bit. Because I have a little bit of a gap, I'm not going to worry about the inside too much. But on the outside, I am going to do it. We can uh, hide that construction a little bit better on the outside. And then I'm going to pinch it here in the middle. Try to fold it pretty tight over the edge. And work with a downwards movement to get a nice uh, tight fit around the edge. And a nice, nice... Um, the English word is not coming to mind. <laughs> But I want to have it really nicely over the edge, fold it tightly. So here we go. And then we can decide uh, on the outside panels. Like, do we want to put some black piece uh, cardstock on top of it to um, to clean it up, or are we just going to do that with pattern paper? And I am um, I'm thinking I'm going to do it with pattern paper. I don't really see the need for extra black cardstock there at the moment. And also on the inside, um, what I might do, but I haven't decided uh, yet, is that I'm going to do black cardstock on the inside edges and then pattern paper on the bottom. But I might change my mind on that. So I'm going to just angle this slightly. And if you're really close to the inside edge, you want to maybe you want to angle the inside as well just to make sure that you don't fold it into the into the inside corner so this piece i didn't cut off really straight so i am going to angle the inside as well Okay, so this is our base. Done. It's nothing special yet. We are going to make it a little bit more special. But for now, um, this is finished. We, uh, I'm going to decorate it once everything is done. Uh, also the lid is done. So uh, yeah, I think we uh, better get started on the lid. Okay, for making the lid, we are going to measure our base. I kind of know what it should be. But you want to make sure. Double check. We're going to measure from outside edge to outside edge. And you're going to do that a little bit close to the corner. And in my case, that is 8 and 3 eighths of an inch. And that's about right. So I'm checking here as well, 8 and 3 eighths of an inch. Now, why do you do it close to the corner? Because you will see if you measure uh, on the inside, the chipboard might bend inwards a little bit and you might measure it too small. 
So 8 and 3 eighths by 6 and 3 eighths, and that sounds about right. So that's what my piece, my base piece, needs to be. So I'm getting my paper trimmer in. Again, make sure that I have the old blade in there. And I'm going to cut my base piece to 6 and 3 eighths. by 8 and 3 eighths. I have a little bit of a bumps corner. Am I going to be bothered about it? I don't think so. 8 and 3 eighths. Okay, so that gives us the base piece, and then from the scrap piece, this is 6 and 3 eighths in length. We are going to cut two pieces. Let's see, we have 2 inches in height, right? Let's do 1 and a half. So two pieces six and three eighths by one and a half. And then I need two pieces that are one and a half by eight and three eighths. Now this I'm going back to my scrap pieces from my first uh, from the base. Oh this is going to be too short. No, so that's not gonna work. Uh, I have this large piece, but I I'm thinking I'm going into my scraps, but you can use um Whatever you have available, of course. Yeah, I was looking for something that was at least 3 inches so I can cut two of the pieces out of there. So 8 and 3 8. And I'm really sorry if you can hear the background noise. They are moaning the lawn. So 8 and 3 8. by one and a half okay I'm going to prepare my side pieces because I want to have a little bit of a decorative angle on here so I'm going to get my corner punch from your memory keepers with the angle and I'm going to angle my pieces on the long side so on two sides only just like this maybe it's better to see if I put it down just like that and I do that on all my pieces now if you don't have this corner punch you can also do this by hand what you would do is get a ruler and a pencil and measure from the short side 3 eighths of an inch inwards and then on the short side, you are also going to measure 3 eighths of an inch up. Connect those lines or those marks. And cut off the angle with your paper trimmer, with your knife. With, if you have strong scissors, you can use strong scissors as well. So you can also create this angle. See, it's almost perfectly the same as with the punch only this makes it a whole lot quicker okay then what I'm going to do is get my base piece in and I want to make a window in here which is optional like a whole lot of things are optional in projects um, I'm thinking I'm going to do one and one eighth of an inch Let's see how that looks. So I'm lining up the grid one and one eighth of an inch. And I will do that on all four sides. And I will see what we get. I think this 
looks good. So this is what I'm doing. So one and one eighth of an inch from all four sides. And then the frame ends up being six and one eighth of an inch by four and one eighth of an inch. So for cutting it out, I'm going to use uh, a paper piercer first. I'm going to make a little hole on the intersection of my pencil lines. And I'm going to cut it with my ruler and my straight blade. Um, you can also do this in your paper trimmer, right? It's just what you prefer to do. I'm going to place... I'm just going to cut with several... I just feel that my blade really has a problem with getting through this chipboard. But Okay, once I've done a couple of strokes along my ruler, I'm going to finish it off without a ruler. Okay, there we go. Another scrap piece there. Okay, make sure that I, these are my side panels, this is my base panel. And um, what I'm going to start with is finish off the inside of this frame. Again, I'm going to use the tape for it. And I'm going to do really simple, sticking it on here with a little bit of overlap on both sides. And make sure that you have some overlap on the other side. So you also have some tape showing right there. Just stick that down. Turn it over. And I'm just going to cut like a diagonal from the corner out. Pull this up. And pull this flap up. I like it when things are easy. <laughs> and then I'm going to fold this one over. So I have a little bit of a, a lot of space here, but that's that's okay. I'm burnishing with my fingers right now. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other long side. Okay, so for the short sides, I'm going to turn it over. So I did the long ones, I stuck it down on this side. Now I'm going to turn it over. I have my angles here. And this is where I'm going to stick down a piece for the short side. Basically doing the same thing, just starting on the other side of the chipboard. If I was using cardstock for this, I would not do it this way. Too much bulk. Okay, so I did the same thing, angle, pull this flap over, and we're not going to see any of that later on. You, re you would really have to get in on top of your project to see that you have that piece there. It's not what you're going to be focused on. Okay, and now the other one. Okay, so that inside is cleaned up. Okay, we've made the lid the with a frame, optional with a frame, and now we are going to prepare our side pieces. I've already prepared three of them, but we are going to cover or clean up uh, the three sides, the three outer edges of every piece. So I've already prepared three to save some time. I need to do one more. And again I'm going to use the tape and um, I found that the easiest way to go was doing it like I'm doing it right here. I'm going to place the outer edge on top of the tape centered and I don't go all the way to the cut edge. I leave let's say about a quarter inch space and then I just go 
like this because I, I want to have a coverage close to the to the edge and again I'm going to cut it here I have I aim for about a quarter inch if it's a little bit less or a little bit more it's fine but you don't want it want it to be more than half an inch so I just want to do this with the least amount of bulk of the layers of tape and just a, a coverage close to this short edge here so I have about a quarter inch space and now what I'm going to do that's going to be really hard to catch on camera but we have our at least I have the angle in here and if you have a straight angle you need to do the same thing but you only need to cut on one place I'm going to cut a v-shape in my tape up to the starts of the angle on both sides so it's, it's even hard for myself to see where it is because I'm working with black on black and it's 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 difficult so I'm just going to cut it I'm not going to cut all the way up to the chipboard I leave a small amount of space and my pieces they keep sticking onto my scissors so that's a little bit annoying but so I'm just cutting out small triangles to create this and then the point of the triangle should be really close to that angle point there I hope that makes sense so I'm going to do that on both sides And so every time I cut, I need to <laughs> remove this because if I keep it on my scissors, I'm just scared that it's going to end up somewhere where I don't want it and I don't get it off anymore. And then I also need to do that right there. Okay. So this is what we have now. And I'm going to start with pinching on this middle part, that small middle part there. Just fold it over on both sides and then we have a little bit of overlapping here. And this is the only thing that makes it a little bit more difficult. Is that I really need to use my nails now because it's, the tape is sticking out on both sides. But I try to fold that inwards a little bit and then pinch that side over. And then I go to the other side and repeat that. So I try to pinch that in. And then stick that part down. And then we only need to do the long part. So again, I'm trying to fold that in with my nails, which is, I really want to lay it on my work surface, but that's not possible. So that's the only thing that I struggle with a little bit. And then I try to pinch it over as straight and as best as I can get it. And just burnish out any air that's underneath there. It's pretty forgiving. Okay, so that's... You need to do that for all four of your side pieces. And then we are going to put this together, right? So we're going to... One of my pieces um, curved a little bit. And this is going to be the inside. That's because when I was folding it over, I had it on my work surface and I pushed on it and I bend it with that. So don't do that. But that will work out in the end. That's all fine. So I'm just make sure like maybe there is one side that is uh, not as pretty as the other side. Make sure that that side is on your work surface and the good side is facing up. Like I have a little bit of a bed fold here. I'm going to make that the inside. But other than that, my pieces look pretty, pretty good. So doesn't really matter. So we are going to do it like this. I'm thinking I'm going to start with attaching the long pieces. So goes to the side. I'm going to use my tape. And also for my frame, I'm going to see if this is going to be the outside or this one. Does it really matter? It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to do it like this. It doesn't matter and still I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, on the bottom here, I'm going to place my tape with about half an inch overlapping on both sides. 
cut that off. Turn it over and I also need to turn this piece over now. And then I have a scrap piece of chipboard here. I'm going to use that as my spacing piece because we need about the thickness of the chipboard space between um, our cardstock pieces. Of course that's going to stick a little bit so I'm using the grid on my work surface a little bit to help me to line it up straight. So I'm going to push this up to my chipboard piece there. I feel that I can go in a little bit more. Okay, remove that and fold this over. Okay, so this is my outside now and I'm going to do an extra piece of tape here to cover that up. Let's not go too close to the edge so we don't have to hide that little, don't have to worry about hiding that our pattern paper will go over it for the most part. Just like that. So. Okay, I need to keep an eye on what is the right side and what is the wrong side. So this is my front. I'm going to mark it here. That's the front. Okay, same thing here. So with a little bit of overlap. What am I going to do is I'm going to attach it to the flap first with a little bit of overlap. And then what I want to do is turn it around and Cut with an angle, I'm trying it here, so if it doesn't work, wait for a second, but cutting with an angle here towards the chipboard corner. And I want to, okay, let's leave it at that for a second. This is my good side, so I need to turn this around. You can also eyeball it, but I uh, like to be uh, the same on all sides. Then I am lining it up, and this is a hard, hard one to see that you are nicely lined up. Also because my chipboard piece is a little too long. Let's see if I have something shorter. Okay, perfect. And I can see a little bit better if my edges uh, are lined up. So I'm using the fold, the chipboard edge. Okay, that's easier. Yep. Okay. So I want to cut this off slightly. So I need to think about this. I'm going to cut here with a really slight angle. So I have this flap here, and I can fold that over. And I'm going to 
going to do the same thing here and I'm doing this so that I don't create too much bulk on the outside so it looks nice and pretty there when we're done okay and now here on the inside we need to cover it up from edge to edge cutting it where I know for sure that I have enough and then I can cut it where I can see what I'm doing and burnish that down yes I like how that worked so let's do that again on the good side of your short piece we're gonna apply the tape with some overhang turn it around oh it's a little bit too much can i lift it up Of course I want to have a little bit more space to fold over. There, that's better. Okay. So on this side we are going to cut with an angle towards the corner and then here with a slight angle to cut out that piece. And now we need to attach it. Again, my spacing piece, scrap chipboard here. And the ugly side, yeah. Well, it's not that ugly, but. I'll line up everything, stick it down, and then we can fold these over. And do the inside. From edge to edge, right? So I went a little too long here. A little bit more, actually. I'd rather cut twice than just cut off too much at once. There we go. And a good burnish. Okay, and then we can fold these down as well. Now let's give a double check that uh, we did it right. So we are able to pull, place this on top of our base. Yes, we are. It fits. Something went right here. 